this panel tries to use the Bannock Tosky paradox to make infinite copies of objects and then sell them. I like you would figure, it doesn't work, or does it? Because as some of you might be aware, the paradox in question does indeed provide proof that there is a way to take any ball, cut it into five different pieces, and then take those pieces and rearrange them into two copies of the original ball with all its geometric properties. In other words, we can literally multiply objects. It is possible because of mathematical axioms which make up the theories we use, and because of how we think of infinity. But today we'll try and explain the Banach-Tarski paradox without all the complicated stuff so anyone can understand it. To start off we need a sphere, and we need to think about two specific rotations. The first spins the sphere around a vertical axis to east or west, and the second rotation moves it south or north. We need the angle of these rotations to be irrational, something like the square root of 2 degrees, so the sphere doesn't stop there after any number of rotations. Now let's pick a random point on the sphere and call it A. This will be our starting point. From there we can reach other 4 points using rotations, going south, north, east and west. Each of those new points gives us access to 3 more points. The fourth will take us back to where we came from, which we will not count twice. If we continue with this method, we get a huge network of points we can identify by their addresses, the sequence of rotations needed to reach them. Duplicates are not permitted, and addresses are always simplified. This means there is no need to go south and then come back north. It's a meaningless movement that achieves nothing and gets simplified. To access the point EES for example, you need to move east twice from our starting point and then south. There we find our point. Simple enough. As you might have guessed, Yes, these points can be infinite. What we need to do now is classify these points. The first category includes points with addresses ending with N. The second category has points with addresses ending with S. The third category are points with addresses ending with W. And those whose address ends with E are the fourth category. If we separate everything, we get five categories. The fifth being our original point which doesn't fit anywhere. If we take the first category ending with N, we we will never find any address having an S before the last letter, because rotating south then north gets simplified. If we rotate this entire first category to the south, that means we're adding an S to the end of every address. But wait, since these addresses end with N, adding S and then simplifying gives us addresses ending with W, N and E, but never S. In other words, the first category now contains points that belong to the third and fourth categories, since these these points are infinite and end with every direction except for S, we could combine the rotated first category with the second one to recreate the original sphere, and if we take the third category, rotate it to the west, and combine it with the fourth category, we get a second complete copy of the original sphere. Now I left out some details and the original point is still waiting in there, but the key insight is this, the banach tarski paradox is just an infinity trick, there are infinite real numbers between 0 and 1. Just like there is an infinity of natural numbers, the number 2 has the same number of multiples as 20, which is infinite. Even though 2 comes before 20, if you add or subtract a number from infinity, it still is infinity, because infinity goes on forever. This however has nothing to do with the real world. If we divide any physical object, the parts have to fit into the original volume. Nothing more, nothing less. You can't have something from nothing. It's physically impossible. The pieces in banach tarski are so abstract that they can't be made with any real tool. They exist only as mathematical sets of points, not as physical objects you could hold or measure. 